From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tim Coco, and this is the Open Mic Show. Uh, we're being preempted at least for a bit on uh, Haverhill Community Television. Uh, but, of course, if you're listening or watching, you know how to do that. We'll get to the complete list in a minute. But first, no school, all schools, Haverhill, tomorrow and Wednesday. No school, all schools, Haverhill. I've been wanting to say that for a while. That was what Ralph Hall used to say uh, on WHAV in the morning. All of us gathered around the radios waiting to see what uh, what would be the result in this non-internet age at the time. No school. All schools. Haverhill. We're waiting for HCTV to catch up with us. Obviously, the big item of the evening is going to be the storm. Uh, this is, we're being told, a possibly historic a blizzard of very large proportions. If you've been listening to WHAV today, you've heard our meteorologists, beginning with Steve Lavoy this morning, telling us that we can expect uh, up to two feet of snow. We have heard from uh, others, Boston stations, that perhaps three feet of snow is coming. Uh, but uh, we'll check in with our meteorologist during this broadcast and give you a complete update. All right now that we're uh, back on uh, Haverhill Community Television, no school, all schools, Haverhill, and in fact, uh, most of the state. Uh, you'll find that is true. Governor Charles D. Baker has announced a state of emergency. Again, most of the broadcast tonight will be devoted to storm-related news, but guess what? If you're uh, overwhelmed by it already, uh, we will have a couple of lighter side items, and of course, we'll take your phone calls. This is the Open Mic Show, 978 374 1900 978 374 1900 the program can be seen Haverhill Community Television HC Media Channel 22 may also be seen at whav.tv on your computer or smartphone in case um, uh, whatever method you're using is interrupted. And, of course, WHAV is on the air 24 hours a day, seven days a week at whav.net. Also on AM radio, 1640, cable television, Andover, Channel 8, Methuen, Channels 8 and 22 on Comcast, Channel 32 on Verizon Fios, Plasto, Channels 17 and 23, Sandown, Channel 17. And, of course, Haverhill Community Television often runs the uh, audio behind the bulletin boards. This hour of the Open Mic Show is being brought to you by Haverhill Bank, just one bank. Incidentally, uh, topping our, our closings and cancellations, uh, Haverhill Bank, Merrimack Valley Federal C Credit Union, and others have all announced they will be closed tomorrow. Again, I'm not sure they have much of a choice with the governor's declaration of emergency. Today, Mayor James J. Fiorentini of Haverhill announced an extreme snow emergency for the city starting tonight. Uh, it started about a half hour ago, actually, and will continue through 6 p.m. Wednesday. It's the first time I've seen a uh, press release refer to an extreme snow emergency. I wonder how many of you feel that this is just a typical New England winter night, or how many of you think it is the end of the world. Uh, we have seen both extremes. Uh, today I needed to buy coffee for the office, an ordinary everyday mundane routine, or my staff would kill me, and there was no way you could get near a supermarket. I had to pay an enormous price at a convenience store. I wonder how many of you were either adding to that traffic or were thinking this is like the day before Christmas and you, know, you just want to make a quick errand at a store and it's jammed. 
Anyway, the mayor has announced an extreme snow emergency for the city. Uh, it started a half hour ago. It'll continue through Wednesday night at this time. The streets need to be cleared for safety. Parking is not permitted on any city street, the mayor said. There are municipal lots available for parking, including the Haverhill Public Library, the all, uh, I'm assuming, All Saints School, actually all, all school parking lots, the uh, Somebody Cares New England lot at 358 Washington Street, All Saints Church, 120 Bellevue Avenue, and City Hall. There is going to be a shuttle available at no charge for residents who decide to park at the Tilton School, 70 Grove Street, 6 to 9 p.m. only. Okay, this uh, this also in all market basket stores are closing uh, in 20 minutes. All market basket stores are closing in 20 minutes, and they will also be closed tomorrow. If you have uh, cancellations or notices, uh, feel free to call the open mic show. Uh, Nate will either hand them to me, or if you want to talk about them, you can talk to me, 978-374-1900. Incidentally, Team Haverhill's possible dreams has become the impossible dreams. Uh, it's, its event at Northern Essex Community College for this evening has been canceled. It has been rescheduled uh, for, I believe, Groundhog Day. We'll get to the list of cancellations as they come in. If you're just tuning in and haven't looked outside, uh, the mayor has announced this is an extreme snow emergency. Governor Charles Baker has says it is a state extreme emergency, and uh, all schools will be closed in all cities tomorrow. The mayor goes on with his announcement, the uh, MVRTA garage down in Rose Square and the um, Herbert H. Gokey Jr. Memorial parking deck on Merrimack Street are also available for off-street parking. Now, the underside of the deck, I can see, would be free of snow. I wonder how they're going to deal with cars on top uh, with the snow. Anybody with comments on that, uh, feel free to call the program. Uh, The mayor says there will be no trash or recycling pickup tomorrow or Wednesday. If your trash recycling day is scheduled for Tuesday, it will be picked up on Thursday. If your day is scheduled for Wednesday, then Friday, and so on. Thursday and Friday trash recycling pickup, Saturday. So I guess it's shortened for some people. The recycling yard will be closed on Wednesday. I imagine it's also closed tomorrow, but I didn't hear that. If you have any questions, you can call the Highway Department. It's probably a number we should put on screen somehow. Uh, Highway Department telephone number in Haverhill, 978-374-3817. The Haverhill Highway Department, 978-374-3817. If you are in need of a shelter... And, you know, keep this in mind because in case you lose power, um, if you're in need of the shelter, call the Haverhill Police Department, 978-373-1212, 978-373-1212, and they will make arrangements to open the Citizens Center at 10 Welcome Street. Superintendent of Schools, Jim Scully's cancel school for Tuesday and Wednesday. Keep that in mind, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, the mayor says, I encourage residents to help each other out, and where possible, please share your driveways. It's critical to keep the streets cleared for emergencies and the Department of Public Works. Okay, I know we have some calls. If you just bear with me a moment, uh, let's just take a quick look at some things that could uh, impact you. Uh, The mayor uh, also said he's conferred with the police, highway, and school departments. Uh, He's using the term again, extreme snow emergency. All on-street parking is banned. And uh, this this particular announcement says banned until Thursday night. No parking will be allowed on either side of any street starting tonight at 6. Uh, Again, that was 42 minutes ago. This is necessary to keep the streets clear for emergency vehicles and to allow plows and sanders to plow and then later remove the snow. Uh, 
Uh, the mayor says in this later announcement, we recognize that this presents a hardship to many of our residents. Please help us by helping your neighbors. If you have a neighbor that does not have off-street parking, please offer to share your drive with them. If you do not have a place to park and do not have neighbors you can share with, there are some suggestions uh, which we went through before, the parking garages, the school parking lots, etc. Uh, the mayor concludes, everyone is going to do their best during this storm to serve you. There are going to be inconveniences. We ask for your cooperation and your patience. Uh, quote, working together with neighbors, looking after neighbors, we will get through this. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Haverhill Mayor James J. Fiorentini. The announcement by Jim Scully, Haverhill Superintendent of Schools, uh, earlier, uh, he said, given the severity of the forecast, I am hereby announcing the closing of the Haverhill Public Schools for Tuesday the 27th uh, and Wednesday the 28th. A quote, as we go through the storm, if there are other important messages, I will provide the same. All right, I imagine many of you did receive the automated telephone calls with the mayor's voice uh, today. If you didn't, uh, you're not signed up for them, or for some reason they haven't found you, so you might want to look into that. All right. Um, Nate, why don't you take the... Um, why don't you take uh, the break now uh, so that we can give our caller uh, uh, more attention. So if you take the break, I believe this hour, is this the hour we have mass moments, uh, the movie review? All right, we have something this hour, uh, very short. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the Open Mic Show after this. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. Phil Christie here. Still not sure when your favorite features are broadcast? Check out the What's On page at www.whav.net for complete listings. Catch the wave! The most trusted man in America, news anchor Walter Cronkite, once said, It is absolutely essential in a democracy to have competition in the media. A lot of competition. That sentiment is one of the driving forces behind WHAV's expanded local news effort. This is News Director Dana Esmail inviting you to listen to my hourly weekday newscast right here on WHAV. You'll also find the area's most comprehensive local news reporting at whav.net on your computer or smartphone. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. And that's the way it is. Today is January 26th. On this day in 1864, a visitor from Seattle held a meeting in Lowell. Asa Mercer explained to his largely female audience that there was a great scarcity of teachers in the Washington Territory. Jobs and single men were plentiful. Both were in short supply in Massachusetts. Any woman who could raise the money for her passage would readily find a teaching position and soon a husband. Mercer also appealed to the women's sense of duty. Their presence and influence were so much needed in the West, he told them. In spite of the opportunity Seattle offered, it was unimaginably far away. Only 11 women chose to accompany Mercer on his journey home. These brave teacher pioneers were long known as the Mercer Girls. For more about the Mercer Girls, go online to massmoments.org. This Massachusetts Moment has been brought to you by the Massachusetts Foundation for the Humanities.
From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. We're back here on the Open Mic Show live uh, unless you've been sleeping under a stone, there is a storm emergency uh, described uh, by the governor and others as possibly historic in scope. We'll hear from WHAV meteorologists at the top of the hour to see if, in fact, the Merrimack Valley is going to get the same treatment as the rest of the state. Uh, before we go to the telephones, uh, some breaking news items. Other things do happen in a snowstorm, too. Uh, Haverhill Jeff. Deputy Fire Chief uh, Moriarty is uh, set to become the Fire Chief in Lawrence. So that is breaking news. As far as I can tell, no one else is running it. Uh, I never understand that. But Haverhill's Deputy Fire Chief Brian Moriarty has been nominated to become Fire Chief in Lawrence. Lawrence Mayor Daniel Rivera said today he plans to submit uh, Moriarty's name to the Lawrence City Council for review and confirmation. So other things, if you want more information on that, go to whav.net. Okay, you are on the open mic show. Sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, good evening, Tim. Good evening, Jerry. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, you you have to be commended, really. Why is that? Well, you're there at the radio, uh, you know, making, uh, you know, making everybody concerned or aware of the, of the storm. Uh, you, sh- you should get the... Uh, Medal of Honor with three oak leaf, oak leaf clusters because the program could have been canned tonight, a canned program tonight, and no. people would have understood. But no. you, you're doing what you you like to do and what you feel you have to do, and that's that's wonderful, really. That's uh, well, wonderful. well, thank you very much. I, I believe it is uh, a service that radio stations must provide. Uh, I know a lot of people don't take that stuff seriously, but tomorrow morning. Uh, we expect very well that our news department is going to be here letting everyone know what happens. Yes. Uh, you know, it, uh, the last time I was in a storm like this, I think, was in 78. Uh, the blizzard of 78. Yeah, that was the, that was the time when, what was the, uh, the governor then? Was that he a, was pitching in a tank with a turtleneck sweater. Dukakis? Yeah, yeah. In a tank again? <laughs> no, no, no. That was a, it showed some cartoons of him during that period uh, in a tank oh, with, a, with, a, with a turtleneck sweater, I remember. All right. But I was at FEMA headquarters in uh, Framingham. Oh, were you? Yeah, and even uh, at that time, there was no, you couldn't drive your car on the highways. And as I went, as I went down 495, I didn't see any cars. The only car I saw was a, a couple of state troopers, you know. All and right. I get, and I get to the FEMA headquarters, you know, and. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, Route 93 was a parking lot back then. Yeah, I got uh, I got down there to uh, FEMA down in Framingham with the state police. Called, it's called the command center. Remember? Yes. Yeah, it was called the command center. It's actually three floors, and one of the floors is below ground. Uh, so anyway, my job there was to answer the phones and try to make sure that National Grid prioritized certain types of happenings. Like, for example, if there were elderly, if there was a nursing home or something like that that was out without power, uh, try to get National Grid to uh, prioritize it so that would be you know, taken care of first. Yes. And then the other thing that I was doing was uh, making sure that our uh, public water supply, pumping stations, and treatment plants, both uh, drinking water and wastewater, had auxiliary power and uh, and uh, things like that. And I was there, oh, I, I don't know, I was there for like 12 hours. Uh, all right, well, that sounds like the kinds of things that um, are very important. Now, I, it's funny you mentioned the that center because National Grid, Marcy Reed, the president of National Grid in Massachusetts, uh, apparently is going to have a press conference tomorrow morning at 9.30. Uh, we expect to uh, attend. And I guess um, 
You know, in a way, I'm going to I'm going to give Marcy Reed credit because if everything goes terribly tonight, uh, they're going to wish they hadn't had that press conference. So maybe yes, uh, <laughs> one of the things that I've noticed uh, with National Grid, uh, they don't get marks, good marks for uh, maintaining the uh, and, and and trimming and removing the uh, trees that are hanging over limbs. And when we'll when we have something like this. Uh, that's that's the first thing that happens. The lines get laden with snow, depending upon, you know, meteorological conditions. Sure. And they hang over the wires, and then the next thing you know, the wires buckle, and that whole section of that community is without power. And they haven't really been attentive to that. In fact, it's been a long time, but presently uh, they're doing trimming in uh, in Methuen. But, you know, their, their maintenance has not been been what you call stellar, uh, as opposed to some somebody like uh, Ipswich, Ipswich, uh, uh, Ipswich Light, Light, Light Company, all these small private communities, you know, that have them. Not too many. Littleton is another one. Uh, actually, they do a good job on trimming. They have a routine uh, program where they uh, where they do the trimming on an annual basis, you know. Yeah, they just uh, issued a um, another press release. We received a few today from National Grid. Uh, I'll just see if there's anything new in this. As a potentially historic winter storm heads for New England, National Grid continues to prepare for what could be a massive power restoration effort in its wake. Company officials are also urging customers to take appropriate precautions, uh, the, the same everyone else is saying. Uh, meteorologists predicting the storm, which has been dubbed Juno, could drop as much as 30 inches of snow, bring wind gusts of 60 miles uh, per hour uh, to um, all of Rhode Island and parts of eastern and central Massachusetts. Yeah. High tides may also cause flooding. All right. So, yeah, But you're absolutely right. If you recall, and I don't know if you were affected, but was it 2008? Not that long ago. Yes, uh, I had to move out. I had to go to my... My daughter's house because I have I have a CPAP machine and we lost power here. Yeah, I was out without power for um, three days, I believe. Um, I actually, it's funny you mentioned I have a CPAP machine too. And, oh, you uh, do? Yeah. <laughs> and I slept at the office. <laughs> uh huh. So um, yeah. Uh, so no, and uh, those are the kinds of things. And I remember uh, the final the final night. I decided that I just wanted to be home. The power uh-huh. was still out, and um, I decided that I was you know it's going to put some extra covers on the bed. And it turned out actually to be quite cozy. It was thirty eight degrees in my house, and uh-huh. um, but you know I was warm under extra covers. So in case did someone you, did you ever think of putting in a wood stove? Um, yeah, I should have, and I probably still should. I have two fireplaces, but as you know, there's not the heat loss is so tremendous with fireplaces. Yeah, but you can put what's called a stove a uh, stove insert into there in, in there. You know, that's a good idea. And, Wish I thought of it before this. <laughs> yeah, and, and in addition to that, uh, uh, Tim, uh, you uh, with a fireplace, uh, you meet you pretty. It's easy, it's it's almost. An automatic that you would re- that you would meet the uh, you know you would meet the uh, building code because of the uh, you know if it's a if it's a brick fireplace especially you know that's right yeah so yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have that so I had to put in a pellet stove and not only do we li- love it because of its scenic beauty in the front room but it really throws the heat I'll tell you oh, so now you're, I'm trying you're, to figure you're, out you're prepared then aren't you. Yes, uh, both snow blowers. Uh, we uh, checked them today. Added the gas. Went out and got gas. And after that 2008 storm, I bought a uh, I bought a generator. Oh, you did that too. Yes, I bought a generator because I uh, you know I wasn't comfortable going out of the the house uh, to my daughter's. I had to bring the equipment, the, you know, the CPAP machine and all of that. And uh, she had a generator, so. That's where I went. I and, wonder uh, how many. So I got the, I, I, you know, I waited until summertime, <laughs> and that's when I bought the generator. <laughs> oh, when okay. the prices were right, you know. So is this uh, from uh, from a natural gas? Uh, it's uh, gasoline. 
Oh, okay, gasoline. Yeah, I know. Gasoline, th- I know yeah. that quite a few people after that storm, after that incident in 2008, uh, bought the ones that are installed outside the house and use uh, natural gas. Yes, uh, yes, they do. And uh, mine is uh, outside the house. I have it far away enough so that you don't get any fumes from com- carbon monoxide. And I had the electrician come, and he rigged it. He uh, he uh, put it together, and basically what happens, which is uh, very important, uh, when the power comes on, unless you have what they call an automatic switch off, a guy a guy working out on the on the line could get electrocuted. Oh, know? I see. So I have that 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 in the in the system. So it interrupts. Yeah. It doesn't allow power to go back out to the street. Yeah, that's right. It it, it shuts it off. It shuts the generator off immediately. Yeah. Okay. You got to protect the guy on the line out there. Now you said you were out today. Uh, did you experience find a lot of um, people uh, at the gas station or the supermarket? No, I, I didn't go out, but my son did, and he said you couldn't even get him. You couldn't even. He went to Harbor Freight, so I'll give them a plug, I guess, uh, to buy a, a, another another extra gasoline tank. Uh, gasoline tank, you know. He said they were all out, and then my wife went to Demolis's and. It was mobbed at Demolisus, you know? Yeah, um, yeah someone was today uh, kind of made a crack, and I suppose there's some truth to it. Uh, people are shopping for like they're going to be without power for two months rather than a couple of days. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I noticed uh, I noticed the Hafner's gas station. Uh, oh, you, my, my son was at Hafner's. He, he couldn't get in. Yeah, I noticed the one at uh, Plasto Road, Haverhill Plasto border. Uh, uh-huh. Cars out into the street. Now I had about a quarter tank of gas, but I decided uh, that's just going to have to do because I wasn't going to try to get more. Yeah, that'll be plenty. I would say that'll be plenty. Plenty. Yeah, I mean I don't go anywhere. The so. only other news environmentally is that uh, remember the uh, the people from Andover fought successfully fought. Kinder, Mo- Kinder Morgan from and the, and the Tennessee. Oh yes, uh, gas line. This is the pipeline. They, yeah, they forced Kinder Mo- Morgan to look at an alternative uh, route. You know where it's going? Um, refresh my memory. I th- I thought they were going to go through New Hampshire. You know, no, it's going through Duraket, through Methuen, <laughs> to Haverhill. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, the oh so, you mean of, it's, so you mean it's worse? <laughs> yeah, and then it takes a right turn, and guess where it goes? All right, if you're in Haverhill and you take a right turn, I don't know, I feel like I'm uh, Bugs Bunny. Uh, right. so it goes to Salem Power Station. Okay. Uh, which has been retrofitted to natural gas and is going to go online in 2017. Uh, what's this, the Brayton Point? <laughs> no, uh, it's a pretty big power station. Salem Power? Yeah, that's pretty big. Wow, okay. Oh, I know where Braden Point is, really. Down the Cape, way down. All right, yeah, yeah I'm mixing up which ones. Uh, Salem Power Station is a pretty good size uh, genera- generator. Yeah, what's the, what's the name, though, of the Salem one? Is it just Salem Power? Yeah, Salem, I think it's called Salem Power. Yeah. yeah I, I uh, the other thing is, I never realized it, Tim, but National Grid, in Eng- it's a big company in England. And they only service uh, the Northeast uh, United States in, in, in America. Well, we, uh, we actually and, don't have time to go into it, but I have to tell you that uh, I'm hoping that the new Attorney General, Maura Healy, uh, and maybe the new governor uh, will do something about the fact that utilities are pushing the state around uh, rather than the other way around. It I almost mean, seems like uh, the utilities are in bed with... Uh, you know, the politicians. Uh, well, what it is... just went up 30 some, 37%. Well, I mean, you know, if they... Deregulation, let's let's face it, uh, and I don't, maybe someone will yell at me for being a little bit negative for a second, but deregulation is a terrible thing. Uh, it failed in California, and uh-huh. it's failed here. I mean, so they sold off their generating assets, so now they have no incentive to shop. To exactly. There's no competition. No, so now we have so and they and they and they you know speaking of national grid, uh, they just aborted their contract with uh, Cape Cape Wind Cape Farm Wind. I saw that too. Yes, and I didn't like that. I, it almost seems like 
I'd like to see uh, amendments to the present legislation that basically say, if you're going to abort a green energy contract like that, you're going to be required to look and, and uh, invest in an, 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 another type of green energy, maybe solar or something like that. I mean, I think, um, I think uh, it's incumbent on Governor Baker to dismiss and this is probably a little powerful, to dismiss the uh, public, public utility, utility commissioners. commissioners. And I would, di- I don't, he doesn't have to wait for the terms to end. He can dismiss them for cause. Exactly. Uh, because what they've done is an absolute travesty. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, we've got to save that because uh, people are waiting for the weather forecast, and that's coming up. And people are waiting for your, your news on things to do and, and keep banging away at things that they should be doing to protect themselves and where they can call and where who the, who can uh, help them out really the, their right. neighbors are their neighbors are the best people no and that's what the mayor of Haverhill said so I yeah, he, he yeah. agrees with you and you Jerry please stay warm and safe I will I will and uh, if my power goes out I know now of a person with a pellet stove <laughs> yes and I, I have a I have an inflatable mattress and you can you can <laughs> sleep on it and you can look at the fire in the pellet stove you can look at it, and the orange and the blue and colors, and oh, it's beautiful. Really. All right. Well, hopefully I won't have to take you up on it, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. You're welcome. You're welcome, <laughs> Tim. You're welcome anytime. All right. Thank you very much, Jerry. Appreciate the call. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Uh, this hour has been brought to you by Haverhill Bank, just one bank. All right. We have local news. Uh, it's not as up-to-date as what we're giving you here. Uh, it's funny. It's only a few hours old, but things do change. We also have the latest weather forecast uh, from our meteorologists who are right here. Uh, so you're going to get a very accurate f- forecast compared to, say, those Boston stations that are trying to figure out what's going to happen in Hall and Situate as well as Atkinson and Plasto. Uh, so you're going to have a, a a pretty good report. Uh, please stay tuned for this uh, essentially a special edition of the Open Mic Show with Storm Central. We'll be right back. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 7.05. WHAV Merrimack Valley. WHAV is a not-for-profit service of Public Media of New England, Incorporated. It's heard on 1640 AM, the web, at whav.net and participating cable television stations. Here's what's happening in local news. Merrimack Valley communities in preparedness mode for a major winter storm beginning Monday night and forecast to bring blizzard conditions and as much as two feet of snowfall. In Haverhill, Mayor James J. Fiorentini said on Facebook stepped up enforcement of winter parking rules began Sunday night and the city will begin towing vehicles not following this month's odd side street parking. Quote, if blizzard proves as bad as predicted, we may be forced to declare an enhanced snow emergency Monday or Tuesday night and ban all on-street parking. We recognize the hardship this will cause. We will open school yards and other areas in inner city neighborhoods. Please plan early and seek alternative places to park, Fiorentini said. He also notes the city will also be more aggressively enforcing the rule against plowing, shoveling, or snow blowing into the streets. In Methuen, a winter parking ban is in full effect. According to the city's website, no street parking is permitted in the city of Methuen from 6 p.m. Monday until 8 a.m. Thursday. Additional information is available through a parking ban info line at 978-983-8643. Also, due to the winter storm, Methuen City Hall will be closed Tuesday. In the town of Andover, a parking ban takes effect at 10 p.m. Monday. According to Andover Police, the ban will be in effect until further notice. In Plastow, New Hampshire, the trash pickup schedule beginning Tuesday will be delayed one day due to the storm. In the town of Sandown, New Hampshire, snow removal operations will prioritize clearing of higher volume roads. 
Meanwhile, Massachusetts State Police remind motorists of several basic strategies to stay safe in snowy weather. These include staying informed in the event of power outages by making sure your devices are fully charged. Motorists are reminded they can dial 511 on their cell phones for current traffic and road conditions on Massachusetts highways, completely clear their vehicles of snow and ice prior to driving, including all lights for visibility. State police also advise to reduce speeds, leave extra space between vehicles, drive slowly, and if possible, avoid driving on iced over surfaces. And in any weather conditions, motorists who become disabled or encounter an emergency on the roadway should dial 911 on their cellular phones to immediately be connected to a state police communications center. The latest storm update is coming up from Wave Weather and is also heard every 30 minutes on WHAV. And for more details, visit WHAV.net. A 30-year-old woman from Stoneham is facing assault-related charges from Haverhill Police after her arrest Sunday night in connection with a reported disturbance in the downtown industrial area on Lock Street. Police report the woman, whose identity was not immediately available, was charged with two counts of assault with a dangerous weapon, assault and battery on a police officer, and resisting arrest. The arrest occurred at 9.57 p.m. Sunday at 40 Lock Street. Two people are due to be arraigned in Haverhill District Court after their arrest for drug-related charges on Friday. Haverhill Police report Elizabeth Kelly Selke, 47, of Amesbury, and Ronald Brunell, 47, of Lowell, were both arrested at 400 Lowell Avenue, Westgate Plaza, at 1.15 p.m. Friday for possession of a Class A substance, heroin, and being knowingly present where heroin is kept. In local high school sports, the Haverhill Hillies basketball squads are in action Monday in matches moved up from Tuesday against Tewksbury Memorial. For more scheduled details, visit whav.net. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Dana Esmail. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Rebecca Foster. In Greece, Alexis Tsipras, head of the left-wing Syriza party, has been sworn in as prime minister. This as Greece's right-wing independence party joined leftist party Syriza in a coalition following Sunday's election, which saw Syriza win 149 seats, just short of an absolute majority. Meanwhile, Eurozone finance ministers are in Brussels for a routine meeting, which is set to focus on the future of Greece's bailout program. Our Europe correspondent Sandra Gatman reports. Greece's election result is dominating talks between finance ministers of the single currency bloc on Monday. Already there's been an outpour of reactions, many leaders warning against the winning party, Syriza's demands for an end to austerity. In Germany, Bundesbank President Jens Wiedmann said he hoped the new Greek government will not make promises it cannot keep and the country can't afford. The UK's Prime Minister David Cameron meanwhile used his social media account on Twitter to warn that the Greek result will increase economic uncertainty. Athens is due to complete a review of its progress in carrying out reforms with the so-called Troika of bailout inspectors by February. Investors are worried that Syriza's new demands for an end to budget cuts will make the country vulnerable to a cutoff of aid, despite assurances across the Eurozone that Greece won't be forced to leave the single currency. The northeast of America is preparing for a potentially record-breaking blizzard, with up to three feet of snow predicted along the coast from New York to Boston. Thousands of flights have been canceled as people are warned transport services are likely to grind to a halt. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has declared a state of emergency. This is going to be a significant storm. Uh, With snowfall today and into tomorrow that will create really hazardous conditions, including dangerous conditions on our roadways. Kurdish fighters have forced out Islamic State jihadists from the Syrian border town of Kobani after more than four months of fierce fighting, according to activists there. U.S.-led coalition forces have pounded ISIS targets in the area with airstrikes in recent days. Laura Wells is a journalist in neighboring Turkey. Kurdish forces have driven out ISIS 
from about 90% of the town. The, the YPG, that is the Kurdish forces there, they are going to try to even continue beyond Kobane. But there are celebrations right now all over within Kobane, also on the border in Turkey. There are many Kurds there, some of them Syrian Kurds. They've been celebrating since last night, and even in other Kurdish areas in Turkey. So this is a really big coup. But we must note the United States was also very instrumental in their anti-ISIS coalition airstrikes. In the past 24 hours, there have been about 34 airstrikes in Syria, and half of them have been in the Kobane area. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with wave weather. For the Merrimack Valley, blizzard warning in effect through the night into Tuesday. Moderate to heavy snow going through the region through the night here with increasing wind, low temperature, teens. And then during the day Tuesday, moderate to heavy snow during the morning. Somewhat lighter snow during the afternoon and evening. High temperature in the 20s. At night, snow will be winding down and Wednesday becoming partly sunny in the 20s. This is Gary Best, your next wave weather coming up in 30 minutes. Stay informed each day with local news coupled with Pacifica's worldwide coverage. Only local radio can bring you local news, but only WHAV does. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show, a 50-year staple of democracy in the Merrimack Valley. This hour of the Open Mic Show is being brought to you by Haverhill Bank, just one bank. All right, in case you're just tuning in, no school, all schools, Haverhill, and in fact, the entire Merrimack Valley. All right, we do have a caller on the line. Before we do that, let me just uh, touch on a couple of items. Uh, we'll try to post some emergency phone numbers uh, uh, shortly on the screen for those of you watching on WHAV.TV. Uh, I think uh, the most important one for you to remember, though, is if your heat goes out, uh, especially uh, if, if you're vulnerable or a family member that's vulnerable, uh, Haverhill Police uh, will open the Haverhill Citizen Center on 10 Welcome Street for you. So you can call them at 978-373-1212. Uh, we're getting uh, constant updates. We'll keep you posted. I mean, the snow is still pretty light, uh, but uh, there may be, in fact, some, um, some outages uh, during the broadcast, and we'll bring you up to date on those. Uh, what wasn't on the last newscast you just heard, because it was rather late breaking, and you may be very well hearing about it first here at WHAV, uh, we have to thank someone who, who passed along this tip earlier today via Twitter, and uh, I think he knows who he is. I hope he's listening. We thank him for the lead. Uh, but Haverhill's Senior Deputy Fire Chief, Brian Moriarty, has been nominated to become the Fire Chief in Lawrence. Now, we say nominated because it has to go before uh, the Lawrence City Council, and anything that goes there, nothing is a sure bet, as uh, the Mayor Rivera will probably likely uh, tell you himself. Uh, but uh, Deputy Fire Chief Moriarty in Haverhill going to become the Lawrence Chief. Here's what you need to know about this. Uh, it is expected that the current Fire Chief in Haverhill, Richard Borden, will retire sometime in the next year. And without a senior person coming up uh, the latter, so to speak. Uh, this uh, may well give uh, Mayor Fiorentini the opportunity to go outside of civil service and, um, and make some big changes to the fire department. I'm not saying he will, uh, but he has the opportunity to do that. All right, let's go to uh, the phones. You're on the open mic show. Hey, how are you, Tim? Very good. How are you? Good. I I, I can't really hear you, hear you too good. I, I don't. I heard Nate pretty good, but yeah, you're kind of uh, 
All I right. hear you in the distance. Uh, uh, any better now? A little bit, yeah. All right, let's. Oh, that's better. Okay, hey, let's uh, try that. I just want to. We got a uh, uh, cancellation um, right here. Uh, uh, Hot Stove Bowling League. There'll be no bowling tomorrow night at St. Joe's Bowling Alley. So if Tom Sims and Bobby DeSando are listening, no bowling because they like to show up during the snowstorm. Okay, so no bowling. The Hot Stove Bowling uh, League. league. It's, it's All Saints Bowling Bowling uh, Lanes. That's the oldest uh, bowling league in the city. Yeah, actually, wasn't there a trivia question? Didn't you just give away the answer? Yeah, we had that one. No, that, <laughs> no we got a trivia out there. Uh, it's about uh, John F. Kennedy. A famous, uh, it's, uh, the one out there now is uh, after John passed away, he got shot. Um, there was a rock band uh, during the 60s uh, wrote, wrote a song about uh, about John. Named the, the song in the band. Oh, okay. I mean, a lot of people did songs, but uh, few people did. But this, this was a famous uh, rock band. All right, I'm going to ask Nate actually to retrieve yeah, he's that. He's got the. Uh, I, I gave it to somebody. Uh, if he needs the answer, I'll give. I'll give it to you. Later. All right. Yeah, uh, let's make sure we get that. Uh, Nate, yeah, I, I still can't hear you too good. All right, uh, we'll have Nate get that that's, to that's us. Better. All right, I guess I'm just going to move my microphone a little closer to my face, which is advice I give to others here. All right. Uh, all right. Now, did did you go out in the storm? Uh, I mean, not that it was a storm I went yet. Out. What's what storm today? Yeah, I mean, people. Yeah, I, I went out. I, I drove school bus. I drove today. Today was a storm of people crowding yeah. the gas stations and supermarkets. I went to um, market basket in Salem, and I was in t out in and out twenty minutes in Salem. Not the big one up there, the small one that's uh, near Kmart, the big Kmart. Okay, so that wasn't too bad over no, there. No, there, there was a lot of people, but like I said, I got uh, I got twenty dollars worth of stuff what I needed, and I got out of there. Well, you know, this is New England. I'm not trying to play down the significance of it, but no, um, I, I just wonder sometimes if uh, there's a, an overreaction to these things. Well, um, I, I know two days before the blizzard of '78, they, they call for flurries. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I, I worked the storm. I worked for the highway at the, at, the, at that time. So uh, I, you know, you see, you, you know, you see what happens. I mean, I, I it, it started snowing pretty good today. About one thirty, I was in the school bus up to high school, and and uh, somebody said it was uh, ocean effects. Now it's it's uh, it's barely snowing. Yeah, I just took a look out. There's not much on my car, no, so it's, it's not here yet, I guess. Uh, but um, uh, we'll see how this goes, and um, we'll follow that. So yeah, maybe your weatherman there, maybe he knows all about it. They're calling it a bumbo genesis. The storm. Bumbo Genesis? B U M B O Genesis. G E N I S E, -S, I guess. Genesis, yeah. No. I don't know if it has something to do with the atmospheric pressure. All right, now the meteorologist on duty tonight here is Gary Best. Uh, Gary Best. Is any related to Peter Best? I don't know. Where's Peter from? England. Oh, I don't know. Peter had something to do with the Beatles, anyway. I think it was Peter Best. But anyway, I, I've got another thing here talking about atmospheric pressure. Maybe Jerry uh, can chime in on the uh, the footballs. Oh, that's an interesting question. Okay, what's uh, your what's your theory here? My theory is that uh, I, I don't believe uh, any of the Patriots did anything wrong. I just believe that we just we hated so much that, and we win so much. So I, you remember the old Dallas Cowboys? Uh, it brings it brings back memories of when Dallas used to win all the time. Everybody hated them, but um. Okay, now the, the the latest the latest I've heard on this was they've got a, a a person of interest they're looking for. They caught him on film. Now are you going to hear this? This is you're going to hear it first on WHAV. They 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 caught him on film and they they, they want to talk to him. We'll call him Little Cody. Little Cody. Sometime he's he's on film, seen with the ball bag, but. What happened was the, the, the other game, Seattle and Green Bay, went into overtime. So there was a 10-minute delay between the Patriots starting, starting the game. This kid was out in the rain, and he disappeared with the, ball, the balls now, the footballs. Whether he went inside to get out of the rain, and they caught him on. This is what the NFL is saying, that the, the, the ball boy was, took the ball somewhere but for a short time. So they just I don't know what you know where it's going to lead, but that's the theory I have is it happened that during that ten minutes. Okay, that's interesting. He, uh, he, he, I, I, thought, I think he's, 
I thought you were going to say something about atmospheric pressure deflating the balls. No, no, no. Well, that's uh, that's, uh, that's the uh, bumbo gen- genesis. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's PSI. Jerry can chime in on the PSI of the balls, but who? That's what they're chiming in on. They got this guy, this kid, or whoever he is, whether he was the ball, the ball handler, or the towel kid. They usually have somebody young uh, that that handles the balls. You know, the footballs. Somebody came into Timble Timble Tavern and actually told me, you know, um. He said, so-and-so used to be a football handler for the Patriots. I said, oh, no kidding. Somebody we knew. You so, know, I, I think I think everyone is being pretty good about the inherent jokes and in all of this. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is good. They, got, they call this person a person. NFL has called them today a, a little while, about an hour and a half ago, a person of interest. Seen going into a room on a camera with the footballs. But that was during a 10-minute break, probably, when he wanted to get out of the rain. But anyway, uh, I, another thing I just wanted to touch on is uh, I, I got a telescope for the first time, Timmy, this year. And Jerry's right. You'll, you'll, you'll love it. I, I've burned wood for 30. I've been up here. I've been burning wood for 30, 35 years. Oh, so you have a, you have a pellet stove? I not, yeah, I do, and I have a little wood stove in a solar case. I, I got I'm working on some uh, stuff down here to bring over to the tavern. So I, if I you know want to take the chill off, I get on. I, I got a little wood stove burning. Now, where do you buy the pellets? I I buy mine at uh, Lowe's. At Lowe's. They get, yeah, they give you a ten percent uh, discount on the veterans. So I, I buy the Green Supreme. I really like them. Uh, is, is this uh, economical? Yeah, you'd love it. You'd love it. You just uh, you pour them in the hopper. Now, what a lot, Timmy, your wood's a lot of work. I, I, I've got wood out here. I've got wood. I've probably got three or four cord and uh, log length not cut up. But, uh, and I've got some in the garage. My son burns, and he's got the pellets, too. But if you want to see a pellet insert, go over to Kimball Tavern. Okay, you've got it there, too? We've got a pellet stove, and in, 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 like, like Jerry said, instead of a wood stove insert, we've got a pellet stove insert. Well, maybe I should consider that, because uh, I have a pile of wood outside well, that I was too lazy to carry into the house, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you're you better off with the pellets. Yeah. How many, how many fireplaces you got? I have two fireplaces. Well, one, one of the fireplaces you could use for the, for the wood when you want to lay, have a wood fire... And, and and you could put a pellet uh, a w- pellet stove insert into the other chimney. Well, you and Jerry have convinced me. I'm going to look into this. I'm telling you, you go go over and check the one out on Saturday if you get time. When they're open, a- a- Adams there quite a bit now because he's he's in, he's in construction and it's slowed down. But if you see this flag flying out there, stop in. He'll show you how it works. Okay, I'll, I'll actually I'm going to do that because I'm very interested. You and Jerry have seeded my interests. Well, and I, I like that Jerry. That Jerry he knows about this uh, atmospheric pressure. Maybe he, he's <laughs> maybe I'd like to hear somebody talk about the footballs. Twelve, twelve point five psi, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the Patriots balls are way out of whack. Uh, I don't know. For some reason, all I can think of is a Seinfeld episode about shrinkage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, wow. <laughs> but we won't go there. That's with age. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to let this go. All, All right. right, I'll uh, get myself in trouble. Yeah, I, I, I might already have. Thank you. <laughs> All right, hey, stay, stay dry and uh, get off the roads. Stay off the roads. All right, well, thank you very much for that advice. All right, we'll All see right. you. Have uh, a good night. You too, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, I don't know if Nate has already canceled it, but I'd rather you didn't. Um, okay. It's still there. All right. Uh, okay, friends. Uh, no school, all schools, Haverhill and the Merrimack Valley. Uh, we have a bunch of emergency numbers. We're going to get you more of those. We have some news updates. We even have two lighter side items if we can get to them. I'm going to ask the caller that the, we have a caller on hold. I'm just going to ask them to just wait one second uh, so we can squeeze in community spotlight as a public service. We'll be back with more of the Open Mic Show in just one minute. Open mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978 374 1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not for profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. 
Phil Christie here. Did you know you can hear comedy and drama every night? Listen to these remastered classics at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Only local radio can bring you this combination of music, news, and features. But only WHAV does. Community Spotlight is brought to you by Haverhill Bank. Haverhill Bank is a generous supporter of the area's civic and cultural program. That's all it takes is just one bank. Haverhill Bank. Community Spotlight. This is Susan McNeff, Director of Development for the YWCA of Greater Lawrence. Did you know that the YWCA provides programs and services to over 14,000 community women, girls, and boys annually? These programs are diverse and cover a lot of ground, ranging from breast and cervical cancer screenings for low- and no-income women, domestic violence and sexual assault intervention and prevention programs, and residence programs for battered women and their children, to health and fitness programs, child care, after-school enrichment programs, and an amazing summer day camp. For more information on how you can donate either time, money, or services to the YWCA, please contact me at 978-687-0331 or log on to our website at ywcalawrence.org. W-H-A-V. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show, a 50-year staple of democracy in the Merrimack Valley. Uh, all market basket stores are now closed. If you were hoping to get out there uh, before the normal 9 o'clock closing, we're told all market baskets closed at 7 o'clock. Uh, there is a state of emergency uh, in most of the communities around us. There's certainly one statewide. Uh, but Mayor Fiorentini tells us uh, that all on-street parking, all on-street parking is banned uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, so you can park in the MVRTA garage or the uh, Herbert H. Gokey uh, Jr. Memorial Parking Deck on Merrimack Street. You can park at any school. You can park at uh, the Haverhill Public Library. Uh, the key is uh, to get your cars off the street if you do not have a driveway. Uh, if you are uh, a person with a large driveway, offer it to any neighbors you have without so that the city can clear the stro- uh, the snow. Uh, all kinds of alerts coming in. I'm assuming by now you know no school, all schools, Haverhill and the Merrimack Valley. Uh, let's, um, let's, let's try to work in a phone call before we go to Gary Best for an update on the weather. All right, we have uh, Nate is on your side or on my side? All right, we're taking a, a call. You're on the open mic show. Uh, hey, Tim, how are you doing? Good, how are you? This is Greg over in Bradford. Hi there. You know, you've been on my mind a lot lately. What did I do? Uh, actually, I was thinking of um, of naming you and one or two others as unsung heroes in the community, and I'm absolutely serious about this. Uh, well, what for? Well, you know, over the, I've started a little thread on Facebook for WHAV, and it'll eventually it'll be a story. But we've been talking about um, the lost, the lost institutions of Haverhill, and and how uh, sometimes there's this this idea that you can't fight City Hall, uh, that there's no sense in bothering when all of these groups merge or move out of town, and you were out there uh, to save WHAV. And although your first round might not have been successful, uh, your second round, I believe, has been. And so we thank you for your service to save local institutions. Well, let me tell you what I did, the reason I'm calling. First of all, pellet stove, we can talk about that. I've had one in my basement for 20 years now, 19 years. I love the thing. Oh, good. 
Uh, but, uh, yeah, because I have a raised ranch over here, Crescent Farms area, I light that thing up. It cuts down. It, I think it's almost a zero-cost thing. It doesn't cost me that much to run it because when that's running, the heat rises, warms the rest of the house, and it also heats my uh, basement, which has no heating system. Oh, okay. But anyway, I called to thank you, Tim, for providing a critical service this evening Given the weather conditions, given what's going on, you, Gary, Dana, everybody else over there, you're providing something that we have not had for a long time. Oh, well, thank you and very much for that. Service, service to the community of Haverhill uh, that is peculiar to the community of Haverhill in a time when it is most needed, meaning we're having this big blizzard. And uh, all I can say is God bless you, because it's something that is badly needed and over on facebook on the lpfm board okay i made a comment and we've already got a bunch of likes i said whav.net is uh is on servicing us now and well thank uh, you very much lpfm comes through it's going to be so you know it can't come soon enough well thank you very much no seriously i've been thinking about you because uh, oftentimes i mean the list, I don't know if you happen to see it, the draft list, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, we've lost more than we've gained. I think um, uh, a person named Jack uh, commented uh, that it would be easier to make a list of what we haven't lost yes, uh, than what we've lost. And so uh, there's some exciting things happening. I, I know that you're kind of a... Uh, clued into how these things work and a lot of people mm -hmm. aren't uh, but um, although we were granted the construction permit apparently we have yet one more challenge to face uh, those of you who follow FCC filings will find it and uh, we will uh, we'll address that I will tell you uh, you know I wasn't sure I was going to go public with this but our legal bill our legal bill to get this FM station was forty one thousand dollars and um, you know, <laughs> we we you know did a settlement, so the the church is getting their station, and we're getting this one, and yep, everybody's uh, happy. That's good. But uh, you know, even those settlements cost some money. So yep. uh, I'll have some announcements about how we're going to do that, and some pretty exciting things that are that are coming forward. So I I do I, you really have been on my mind uh, for someone okay. who worked to save a local institution, and um, you know you kept it in all of our minds when it seemed like there'd be nothing else that could be done. Uh, so you're an unsung hero. I really mean that. But you carried the ball under the goal line. Well, you know, someone had to start or the you're game. You're at the five-yard line now. You started the game. <laughs> you scheduled the no, game. No, I didn't start the game. <laughs> Brian and I did not start the game. We just kept it in people's minds. And I think this is, this is so critical that we now have something here in Haverhill. And, uh, uh, well, business community's got to get got to get the business community behind this and underwrite things and i think that'll be i think that'll be possible well now that you know there's there's that old cliche uh, about uh, you don't know what you've lost uh, until you've lost it or how valuable right. something i'm going to screw up the cliche uh, so maybe others will now step up now that they uh, have lost it but got it back a rare second chance i think you i think you'll do all right all right well i appreciate that anything else on your mind no, that, that's about it. But thank you because uh, this is this is important. Well, I also want to have dinner, and I'm going to come back and listen. I also so. want to thank uh, Haverhill Community Television for sticking around tonight, uh, because. Um you know, they, they probably are all thinking about how to dust off their cars and get home, and they're staying on, and we appreciate that as well. Okay. Uh, well, thanks. That's good. Thanks so much. Well, uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh. Have a good evening. Thank you. Take care. Bye. All right. Uh, there was another phone call, but my light is off, so I don't think that call is there. So why don't we take a break? Uh, maybe, um, can you, okay. Uh, Gary Best is on uh, the meteoro meteorological team. That's a tough one to say. Uh, and he'll uh, give us an update on weather. Uh, and then we'll be right back with more of the open mic show a uh, list of cancellations a list of emergency numbers other things you need uh, for this uh, what the governor is calling a uh, historic storm we'll be back in a second open mic tim coco and the open mic will be right back get in on the action 
Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 736. Try listening to WHAV in your car or anywhere on your mobile phone. For fast access, visit whav.net. Catch the wave! Melinda's Garden Moments help gardeners create and maintain a healthy, beautiful garden with ease, inside or out, and all year long. This is Melinda Myers, inviting you to tune in every weekday morning, right here on WHAV. You'll learn creative ways to grow your own vegetables and herbs while beautifying your landscape. Eco-friendly lawn care, flower garden design basics, unique container gardens, attracting birds and butterflies to the landscape, and much more. Again, please join me weekday mornings for Melinda's Garden Moment for a very environmentally friendly approach to gardening. Remember, only local radio can bring you this feature opportunity, but only WHAV does. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with wave weather. For the Merrimack Valley, blizzard warning in effect through the night into Tuesday. Moderate to heavy snow going through the region through the night here with increasing wind, low temperature, teens. And then during the day Tuesday, moderate to heavy snow during the morning. Somewhat lighter snow during the afternoon and evening. High temperature in the 20s. At night, snow will be winding down and Wednesday becoming partly sunny in the 20s. This is Gary Best. Your next wave weather coming up in 30 minutes. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. This hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. Okay, let's uh, let's recap a, a few storm-related items. Uh, first, uh, the first outages, power outages being reported uh, by National Grid. Is there a four outages? Closest one to us about Topsfield, uh, Nate said, uh, 44 customers affected. Uh, so uh, the outages have begun, even with the small amount of snow uh, that we've seen so far. Or oh, North Andover is the closest. So uh, it is moving closer to us, folks. Uh, in the, the listener area, listenership uh, area. All right, a couple of things. Let's uh, let's let's start with the with the basics. Um, uh, today, Haverhill Mayor uh, James Fiorentini announced uh, what he called an extreme snow emergency for the city starting tonight, and he's going to keep uh, this uh, snow emergency in place until Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, the mayor goes on to explain uh, his reasoning. The streets need to be cleared for safety. Parking is not permitted on any city street. So ignore all the odd and even rules. No parking whatsoever. There are municipal lots available for parking, including the Haverhill Public Library, all the school parking lots, uh, Somebody Cares New England at 358 Washington Street. If you remember, that's the old Scatamaccia Funeral Home. Uh, parking available there. Parking at All Saints Church, uh, 120 Bellevue Avenue. Uh, parking at City Hall. And uh, this this is a, a nice touch. A shuttle will be provided at no charge to residents who decide to park at the Tilton School, 70 Grove Street. Uh, that's only until 9 o'clock tonight. So if you get your car over there and you want to ride home, home, um, do it before 9 o'clock. Also, parking available at the MVRTA garage and the Herbert H. Gokey Jr. Memorial Parking Garage on Merrimack Street. 
Now, this is uh, probably less important, but some of you may uh, care about this. Uh, If your trash pickup was going to be tomorrow, don't bother putting it out. There's no trash or recycling pickup on Tuesday or Wednesday. If your trash recycling day is scheduled for Tuesday, it's going to be picked up on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday picked up on Friday. Uh, But Thursday and Friday, people... Your trash is going to be picked up on Saturday. Uh, The recycling yard is going to be closed uh, Wednesday. Uh, Any questions, call the highway department. And we're going to put this up on the screen in a minute for those of you watching on television. Highway department's number. You might need this. Write this down. 978-374-3817. 978-374-3817. 3817. If you lose your heat, don't stay at home. If you lose your heat and you need shelter, uh, the city is, is looking out for you. Uh, the Haverhill Police Department will open up the Citizen Center in case people need to get warm. Uh, So get the Haverhill Police number ready. Uh, Again, we're seeing outages, 44 customers with uh, National Grid without power. Uh, It is moving in this direction. So uh, write down this phone number, Haverhill Police, 978-373-1212. In case it isn't clear already, no schools in Haverhill or the Merrimack Valley, uh, likely statewide, uh, but Superintendent Scully has canceled school not only for tomorrow, Tuesday, it's also canceled for Wednesday. Uh, so some of you who are going to be going back to work, uh, remember your your kids may very well be home, uh, so keep that in mind when you're making your plans. Uh, The mayor said, I encourage residents to help each other out and, where possible, share your driveways. Uh, It's critical to keep the streets cleared for emergencies and the Department of Public Works, uh, the mayor said. Uh, The mayor uh, since issued a later announcement, and he, um, let's see what's new in this. Um... There's going to be some inconveniences. He's asking for cooperation and that kind of thing. Uh, let's see. We do have various safety tips, but I would say that at this point, uh, it's about too late. I, uh, we're not, we don't go out to the store now. Don't go buying any of these things now. Don't go buying batteries now. Uh, you've, you've kind of missed that chance. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure how helpful this is. Uh, we got a, a press release from a company called EnviroLog that wanted you to know about things you should keep in your home, one gallon of water per person per day for at least 10 days. Well, I think uh, I'm not sure this is really good advice because um, if we're still stuck in the snow in 10 days, uh, you're not a New Englander. Uh, you don't belong here. <laughs> no offense. Um this is probably why the store's uh, market basket was jammed today because people are going out buying a gallon of water per person per day for 10 days. Um, a cell phone with an extra battery. I don't know about you, but my, my phone, I can't change the battery in it. Uh, so, again, I you know some of these more commercial interests kind of take advantage. Uh, folks watching on TV and on radio, listen to this. Kind of a waste. Uh, if uh, you haven't already bought your batteries and your water, uh, then you just uh, stay put. Don't go out there now. Uh, the banks are going to be closed tomorrow. Uh, Haverhill Bank definitely closed. Merrimack Valley Federal Credit Union is closed. Um, Federal Credit Union says uh, they're going to try to open 10 o'clock on Wednesday, but you might want to just uh, listen to, to further cancellations. National Grid is holding a press conference tomorrow morning. We're going to try to cover that live. Um, I'll give them a little bit of credit for daring to announce it because if it's uh, in the past, uh, Nate informs me Pentucket Bank is closed as well. I imagine they all are. That's the governor's order, Governor Baker declaring a statewide emergency. Uh, but, um, you know, Nate always changes my train of thought, so I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, but, oh, National Grid, I have to say, um, you know, they've uh, gotten in a lot of trouble. They paid, uh, I, mean, I think, 
it was millions of dollars in fines. At least that's what the attorney general sought. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping they learn their lesson and that uh, they uh, won't let us sit uh, with cold homes for days like they did in 2008. Uh, but uh, the fact that they're having a press conference tomorrow morning uh, suggests to me that they're pretty confident that they're ready. All right, let's um, – it's about time for a break. Um, so before the person holding on the line, if you would, I just thought I'd, I'd share, you know, again, some uh, lighter moments. Uh, many of you know who Dan Spears is. Dan Spears, he's a, a poet. Um, I don't know that he's accepted my offer, but I want to make him uh, a WHAV's Poet Laureate. Maybe Mayor Fiorentini would consider naming him uh, Haverhill's Poet Laureate. Uh, but we had a story uh, this weekend in our Wavelengths newsletter for members. It's online now if you want to take a look at it. And it's about um, uh, tr- trying to make sure we have enough background in news stories. And his, uh, his poem, he writes, History describes what transpires. Knowledge of history inspires. Uh, Great. Dan Spears. History describes what transpires. Knowledge of history inspires. And he wrote that for WHAV. All right. Why don't we take a brief break? I'm going to ask our caller to to stay on the line just a little bit longer, and uh, we'll be back with more of the Open Mic Show in just a second. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. Phil Christie here. Still not sure when your favorite features are broadcast? Check out the What's On page at www.whav.net for complete listings. Merrimack Valley Happenings is your weekly guide to economic news and cultural events. It's a quick read about local business, the economy, and higher education. It also features an all-in-one calendar of business, cultural, and recreational events. View Merrimack Valley Happenings online or sign up for a weekly email at merrimackvalley.info. Catch the wave! This is Tom Hartman inviting you to tune into the Tom Hartman program on WHAV every weekday beginning at noon. I'm here three hours a day, five days a week, taking your calls live and providing all the news you need to know. The Tom Hartman Program is your media support group for We the People. Again, please join me weekdays beginning at noon right here on WHAV. Remember, only local radio can bring you this progressive talk opportunity, but only WHAV does. This is Take Two Movie Review. I'm Kim Lowe. This week, beware eccentric millionaires bearing gifts. Foxcatcher is a true crime drama that will appeal to those that are sick of the usual cliches that accompany the genre. There are no creepy musical scores or dramatic action scenes. Rather, Foxcatcher is the study of a man whose issues aren't apparent at the very beginning, but rather slowly unravel over time without ever descending into the stereotype of madness. For those unfamiliar with it, the movie centers on the tale of philanthropist and heir to the DuPont chemical fortune, John DuPont, who who financed and built a wrestling facility on his Pennsylvania property for Olympic hopefuls to train. Steve Carell, who plays DuPont, is nothing short of a marvel here. Those familiar with Carell's comedy work may be surprised to see him here. There is nothing remotely funny about his portrayal of DuPont. Indeed, in one pivotal scene where DuPont discusses his mother's love of horses and implies that she may have cared for them more than him, he demonstrates why he is more than deserving of his Best Actor nomination. He delivers it with deep emotion, but never descends into over-the-top drama. Rounding out the cast are strong performances by Channing Tatum and Mark Ruffalo as wrestling brothers Mark and David Schultz. While Ruffalo's performance is generating the majority of the buzz, Tatum's role as the 1984 Olympic wrestling champ, who at first thinks he has met his savior and then slowly comes to realize that DuPont is not what he appears to be, is the one that really stands out. Even though most will know how Foxcatcher ends, this discovery builds a sort of tension that will leave the viewer wondering what will happen next next. This has been Take Two Movie Review. I'm Kim Lowe. Catch up with us at TakeTwoMovieReview.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at TakeTwo underscore Review.
From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. This hour of the Open Mic Show is being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. Uh, we're getting reports uh, that uh, sound is distorted on television. Uh, as far as I know, we're sending out everything fine. Nate, you're watching your levels okay? Uh, it sounds like it might be something happening at HCTV. Uh, but if anyone else has any reports, if you're listening on whav.tv or whav.net, uh, let, let Nate know and we can see if there's something on our end, but it doesn't seem like that at this point. Uh, call the program, 978 978- Three seven four nineteen hundred nine seven eight three three seven four one nine zero zero. Again, some uh, there was some breaking news today. In case uh, you weren't listening to WHAV, uh, Haverhill's uh, deputy fire chief Brian Moriarty uh, has been tapped by Lawrence Mayor Dan Rivera to uh, head the Lawrence Fire Department. Uh, that uh, that appointment's going to need approval by the Lawrence City Council, and we take nothing for granted when it comes from the, uh, the Lawrence City Council. Uh, but nevertheless, um, Haverhill's Deputy Fire Chief Brian Moriarty has been nominated to become Fire Chief in Lawrence. Mayor Rivera there is going to submit it to the City Council for review and confirmation. Uh, Mayor Rivera says it was a um, five-month nationwide public search process. All right, congratulations to uh, Deputy Fire Chief Brian Moriarty. Uh, let's, um, there's some ramifications here uh, for the city of Haverhill. Uh, current chief is expected uh, in Haverhill, the current fire chief, Richard Borden, is expected to retire uh, sometime in the next year uh, with a vacancy in the senior position right behind him. Uh, it looks like uh, the, the uh, mayor, Mayor Fiorentini, may have an opportunity, if you want to call it that, uh, to go outside of civil service for a, uh, a new fire chief. Anybody want to comment on that, uh, give me a call. Let's, uh, let's go to the phones at long last. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You're on the air. No school, all schools, Haverhill tomorrow. I have to say, I, um, I had to start the show that way <laughs> for the same reason. Brings back <laughs> memories. Yeah, no school, all schools, Haverhill. Ken Spaulding? What's that? Who, oh, Ralph Hall. Ralph Hall did it. Uh, Ken might have done it from time to time, but yeah. uh, Ralph Hall was the morning guy. Almost never had a sick day that I can remember, so it was more than likely Ralph Hall. Probably. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I saw uh, I was alerted to your post, I should add, um, that uh, your, your wife would have been 62 today. Yep. Uh, all right. Yep, today's her birthday. Some, you know, memories that you have to uh, live with, so. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, better to have the memories than to not have any, right? Oh, and you see, you're, you're an optimist. That's great. Um, now, uh, we, we did put an item out. I'm going to make sure that we repeat it uh, several times. We did have an item on the news, and it was on our Facebook page. Yes, and, thank you for that. I saw that. Uh, and uh, I don't know if uh, you've seen any response yet, but... Uh, let me uh, take advantage of this opportunity not to not to put you on the spot or anything, but um, a um, a fund has been created at Haverhill Bank uh, for Brian Langlois. Uh, if you could contribute, it would be much appreciated. Uh, Brian lost his uh, his life savings, uh, not just the savings, but the safe the savings was in. Uh, that's uh, pretty galling, if you ask me. So uh, if you can if you can help. Uh, go to any Haverhill Bank branch. Uh, Brian Langlois, uh, if you want to know how that's spelled, that's L-A-N-G-L-O-I-S. Brian Langlois Relief Fund. Brian Langlois Relief Fund. Just one bank. 
at, Bank. at, at Just One Bank, Haverhill yeah. Bank. Uh, we're going to record that and give you a, a sponsorship credit. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, what else is on your mind? Well, um, when you made the announcement that uh, uh, the mayor made about the uh, shuttles from the school parking lots, Yes. Uh, the announcement that I caught uh, said that uh, they would have the shuttle buses up until 8 o'clock. So I don't know uh, if anybody's taking advantage of those. All right, good question. Let me take a look. Now, where did you see the 8 o'clock? Uh, that was, uh, well, that was on Channel 22 at... Uh, before your program. Just now, now uh, were they rerunning the, the mayor's minute from last weekend? I don't think this is a mayor's minute. I think this is something that he did just today. All right, because uh, here's here's a press release from the mayor. Now, he did issue something later than this one, yep. uh, but the, the press release earlier today uh, from the mayor, and if he wants to call in, he's always welcome to, uh, although I suspect he's out looking at uh, emergency vehicles and the like. Probably. Uh, but uh, the mayor's uh, initial announcement is a shuttle will be provided at no charge for the residents who decide to park at Tilton School, 70 Grove Street, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. only. Now, he did issue a later announcement. I didn't think anything like that changed, but let me take a quick peek. Um, well, maybe 9 o'clock is the change. Okay, maybe that's... All right, so um, I suppose, I'm, I don't know how they feel about it, but if someone is... Uh, finds that they park their car and then have a five-mile walk home, maybe <laughs> they can take it. No shoes, you know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they could take advantage of the um, uh, the police letting them into the citizen center. <laughs> so, yeah. So we'll do that. All right. Uh, what did you think of Dan Spears' poem? History describes what transpires. Knowledge of history inspires. Very profound. Uh, it was very nice. So do that. Uh, what else is on your mind tonight, Brian? Well, I was uh, a little confused over your um, your challenge for uh, institutions. Yeah, you know, I tried to narrow it a bit. So uh, Brian's referring to um, a, a challenge out there of lost institutions of Haverhill. Uh, what I was looking initially to do is... Um, the the major institutions of the city, not necessarily little businesses or restaurants, but the ones you could count on uh, to fund charitable activities. And the reason why this is important is that every time we see a charity fold, and I will tell you, and I don't know exactly where they went, and so maybe I shouldn't say they folded, uh, but right next to WHAV in uh, the Ward Hill Business Park, uh, the Red Cross was here. Oh, it's uh, not there now. They're not there now. Oh. I don't know if they found some other place in the city, but they just kind of quietly disappeared. Oh. And, you know, what comes to mind is that uh, the same thing happened, uh, the YWCA on Winter Street, um, you know, and I, I know things are tough for, for all these groups. Uh, they ended up merging with uh, the Lawrence YWCA, and so all decisions are made now in Lawrence. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And so we've seen so many of these, and every time someone else merges, they say, well, the city's so poor they can't support our charity. What are we going to do? But then it gets poorer, <laughs> if that's a word, uh, as a result. And so and I, I see uh, Greg gave you some credit, too, on this, um, uh, and I, I'm sorry if I, I neglected to mention your name. Oh, uh, right. People like you and, um, and Greg... Kaleri uh, fought to keep WHAV in Haverhill, and as I, I don't know if you heard me what I said to Greg, uh, although you might not have been successful in, was it 1995? Something like that. Um, <laughs> you kept it on our minds, and so you're every bit as responsible for saving it as anyone here is, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, but uh, 
my my local institutions list i was thinking of i tried to call it regulated businesses uh, to try to k- separate them from others but like um all of the banks now we used to have haverhill savings bank or family bank downtown family mutual savings bank and when uh, there was a charitable need you could kind of expect to get something from family bank from haverhill cooperative bank from whittier cooperative bank i don't even think that was on my yeah. list well, there was- Corporate giving from you know, private corporations. All right, then that, then we had what things like the Merrimack Valley Pioneers. Is that what they're called? They're still around, as far as I know. Okay, so these kind of groups, and so um, uh, I was trying to come up, and I I think the list of you know uh, Tuscaroras and others are, are valid. You know, we we oh, lost yeah. businesses. Uh, someone mentioned two hundred shoe manufacturers. I I think that that's valid. I don't know. Um, it, maybe it's too difficult to exclude anyone, um, but I'm thinking that the city has lost its wealth. Uh, Bradford College. Um, I'm gonna. That's I'm gonna take. Some, I'm gonna take some heat for this. Uh, I'm sure. Um, but you know, Bradford College should have been forced into bankruptcy instead of liquidation. Um, but they wanted to protect the bondholders who bought the bonds to pay for the new dorms. Uh, you know, this is what bankruptcy was for. Right. And um, uh, the, the, we should not have lost that institution. Well, which chapter did they file? Well, I think in the end they were forced into a liquidation filing because everybody was suing them. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to omit a name here because I'm not sure uh, it was public information or I'm authorized to say, but a major donor to Bradford College, a benefactor, someone who left you know, a half a million dollars or more, uh, to Bradford College, um, actually sued the college uh, when it was closing, saying that they had been ripped off, that they would not have donated the money if they knew two weeks later the college was going to close. Well, it is a rather short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After that. I believe this wealthy donor lost more money uh, f- fighting to get it back, just to prove the point. Yeah. And um, I, I think that that may have been why the final bankruptcy. Uh, uh, you know, again, I'm going to probably take some heat because uh, there, you know, some well-known people associated with that decision. Um, but I you know, Bradford College too. What's that? I missed that uh, college. I mean, I never attended uh, classes there, but I did. You know, I did like it. No, I mean, I didn't go there either. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, an impressive college. Nate is really trying to keep me on schedule, but I'm ignoring him. Um, <laughs> Poor Nate. <laughs> when Mark's here, I'm intimidated. I don't know why. When Mark is here, I'm intimidated. But Nate, I ignore. <laughs> Although he controls the main switches if he hasn't yeah, thought about right. it. <laughs> so tell him, where is Navy uniform? Uh, that does the trick. All right. So, uh, you, any, so I don't know if I helped answer your question with my... Well, uh, I was just wondering about things like we used to have the uh, Department of Employment and Training. That's gone. Well, you know, that's a good one. That's a good one. I mean, the, old, the building where uh, the King Davis Real Estate Agency went. Yeah. And the Department of uh, Transitional Assistance isn't here anymore. Um, Actually, uh, I don't know if you can confirm this. I do not go to the main post office very much. Uh, it, did they close that concession stand uh, that was operated by what the Commission for of the for the Blind? Well, they're individually owned, and uh, I don't know. You know, I don't think I've ever stopped and bought it anywhere. <laughs> Well, you know, I have to admit that when I used to, uh, when my office was downtown, um, uh, there's kind of a rule among dieters that if you get it outside of your home, it doesn't count. Oh, right. So I would always buy a donut at that little stand. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, I see. But I think these are all local institutions. Uh, maybe there's no way to compile a list because we've lost so much. And maybe Jack, and, uh, whose last name escapes me right now, uh, Jack on Facebook, uh, you know you're from Haverhill. Oh, Wynn. Jack Lynch. Yeah, Jack Lynch. Well, it says Maria Lynch. Yeah, Jack but it says. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, they I give don't know what Maria says. <laughs> <laughs> they share it, but usually it says Jack says. But, yeah. uh, but you know, he, he, he made a good point. His argument was maybe you better come up with anything that survived because that's a short list. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a good point. But I just think that we have to stop 
the loss of these institutions. And, and that's why I had kind of a second follow-up question, which was, n- name any institution you believe that is endangered. Uh, wow. Because a couple of years ago, I pulled together a list. I read it on this show, on the air, and took a lot of heat for it. But I listed a bunch of Haverhill nonprofits that had been had their um, their IRS certifications revoked. And I, I did this not to embarrass them, but to um, alert their boards. You know, they're all volunteers, may not have realized it. That to, could be. To go back fix that problem uh, because we don't want to lose you so i guess we'll call it the um, uh, early awareness strike force or something like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll come up with something <laughs> yeah all right i'll leave it to i'll leave it to our uh, poet laureate dan spears yeah, to come up with a better name sure. <laughs> all right anything else on your mind well are you going to raffle off a cake tonight oh uh, yeah we we're definitely going to uh, is this the last night this is the last Monday. Oh, yes, we are. You have a last-minute uh, one to get in? Uh, no, I actually uh, was probably the first one to put one in. Oh. You know, see, Brian, this is why we have valuable members. We almost lost the institution of giving <laughs> away right. a cake. All right. Uh, I'll tell you what, folks. Um, we're very late for news and weather, and all of you are waiting to hear the latest forecast. So. Like a foster. Yeah, that's right, Rebecca. Fa- you know, she wasn't on for a couple nights. I thought maybe she had moved on, but she's yeah, still around. in New York instead of Washington. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, so uh, we're going to do that. And I'm going to tell you, folks, get to any birthdays or anniversaries for February you want to enter in. Here's your last chance. Uh, give us a call. We're going to enter the name into the hat. And thanks to Brian, uh, we remember to. I just and I don't know where this month went. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna draw the. Um, the winner of the February birthday cakes. All right, thank you very much, Brian. There it is. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, take care. Have a good night, Senor. You too. Yep. All right, now we're going to go to news very, very late, and um, Nate is steaming in there, but uh, he'll recover, I guess. Uh, latest weather from Gary Best, meteorologist for WHAV, uh, Dana Esmo with uh, the news of the day, some national news, which... Uh, <laughs> Frankly, our weather situation has made national news all day. So uh, we'll be right back with more of the Open Mic Show. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 809. WHAV Merrimack Valley. WHAV is a not-for-profit service of Public Media of New England, Incorporated. It's heard on 1640 AM, the web, at whav.net and participating cable television stations. Here's what's happening in local news. Massachusetts Governor Charles D. Baker issued a statement Sunday night on the anticipated blizzard. Quote, based on the latest weather forecasts, numerous conversations with the National Weather Service and the team at the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, we anticipate a very significant storm beginning around dusk on Monday evening, said Governor Baker. Baker added, quote, people across Massachusetts should presume that roads on Tuesday and possibly Wednesday will be very hard, if not impossible, to navigate, that power outages are a distinct possibility, and that most forms of public transportation may not be available, end quote. Merrimack Valley Communities in Preparedness Mode In Haverhill, Mayor James J. Fiorentini said on Facebook, stepped-up enforcement of winter parking rules began Sunday night, and the city will begin towing vehicles not following this month's odd side street parking. Quote, If blizzard proves as bad as predicted, we may be forced to declare an enhanced snow emergency Monday or Tuesday night and ban all on-street parking. We recognize the hardship this will cause. We will open school yards and other areas in inner-city neighborhoods. Please plan early and seek alternative places to park, Fiorentini said. He also notes the city will also be more aggressively enforcing the rule against plowing, shoveling, or snow blowing into the streets. In Methuen, a winter parking ban is in full effect. 
According to the city's website, no street parking is permitted in the city of Methuen from 6 p.m. Monday until 8 a.m. Thursday. Additional information is available through a parking ban info line at 978-983-8643. Also, due to the winter storm, Methuen City Hall will be closed Tuesday. In the town of Andover, a parking ban takes effect at 10 p.m. Monday. According to Andover Police, the ban will be in effect until further notice. In Plastow, New Hampshire, the trash pickup schedule beginning Tuesday will be delayed one day due to the storm. In the town of Sandown, New Hampshire, snow removal operations will prioritize clearing of higher volume roads. The latest storm update is coming up from Wave Weather and is also heard every 30 minutes on WHAV. And for more details, visit WHAV.net. Philosopher George Santayana is credited with saying, quote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it, end quote. WHAV, with the help of the Haverhill and Massachusetts Cultural Councils, is addressing local amnesia. WHAV was recently awarded a grant by the councils to expand on its Haverhill Heritage Series. Rather than produce only standalone stories on historical subjects, the radio station said history will, quote, become woven into the very fabric of WHAV on the air on an expanded, fully searchable website and new venues such as Apple TV, end quote. Listeners and readers now find more historical information appearing in news stories. The added background necessarily puts news stories into context, helping to explain the importance or ramifications of subjects. For more details, visit whav.net. In local high school sports, the Whittier Tech Wildcats boys freshman basketball team is in action Monday afternoon at home against Essex Tech. For more details, visit whav.net. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Dana Esmail. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Rebecca Foster. In Greece, Alexis Tsipras, head of the left-wing Syriza party, has been sworn in as prime minister. This as Greece's right-wing independence party joined leftist party Syriza in a coalition following Sunday's election, which saw Syriza win 149 seats, just short of an absolute majority. Meanwhile, Eurozone finance ministers are in Brussels for a routine meeting, which is set to focus on the future of Greece's bailout program. Our Europe correspondent Sandra Gatman reports. Greece's election result is dominating talks between finance ministers of the single currency bloc on Monday. Already there's been an outpour of reactions, many leaders warning against the winning party, Syriza's demands for an end to austerity. In Germany, Bundesbank President Jens Wiedmann said he hoped the new Greek government will not make promises it cannot keep and the country can't afford. The UK's Prime Minister David Cameron meanwhile used his social media account on Twitter to warn that the Greek result will include increase economic uncertainty. Athens is due to complete a review of its progress in carrying out reforms with the so-called troika of bailout inspectors by February. Investors are worried that Syriza's new demands for an end to budget cuts will make the country vulnerable to a cutoff of aid, despite assurances across the eurozone that Greece won't be forced to leave the single currency. The northeast of America is preparing for a potentially record-breaking blizzard, with up to three feet of snow predicted along the coast from New York to Boston. Thousands of flights have been canceled as people are warned transport services are likely to grind to a halt. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has declared a state of emergency. This is going to be a significant storm uh, with snowfall today and into tomorrow that will create really hazardous conditions, including dangerous conditions on our roadways. Kurdish fighters have forced out Islamic State jihadists from the Syrian border town of Kobani after more than four months of fierce fighting, according to activists there. U.S.-led coalition forces have pounded ISIS targets in the area with airstrikes in recent days. Laura Wells is a journalist in neighboring Turkey. 
Kurdish forces have driven out ISIS from about 90% of the town. The, the YPG, that is the Kurdish forces there, they are going to try to even continue beyond Kobane. But there are celebrations right now all over within Kobane, also on the border in Turkey. There are many Kurds there, some of them Syrian Kurds. They've been celebrating since last night, and even in other Kurdish areas in Turkey. So this is a really big coup. But we must note the United States was also very instrumental in their anti-ISIS coalition airstrikes. In the past 24 hours, there have been about 34 airstrikes in Syria, and half of them have been in the Kobane area. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with wave weather. For the Merrimack Valley, blizzard warning in effect through the night into Tuesday. Moderate to heavy snow going through the region through the night here with increasing wind, low temperature, teens. And then during the day Tuesday, moderate to heavy snow during the morning. Somewhat lighter snow during the afternoon and evening. High temperature in the 20s. At night, snow will be winding down and Wednesday becoming partly sunny in the 20s. This is Gary Best, your next wave weather coming up in 30 minutes. This is listener-supported community radio, WHAV. WHAV is the Merrimack Valley's Pacifica affiliate. WHAV, Merrimack Valley, open mic. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Back here on the Open Mic Show, I'm Tim Coco. Host and uh, Nathan E. Webster III is in master control. Actually, he's standing right outside this room adjusting the camera. All right. Uh, Nate says we now have uh, five outages, um, 45 customers total so far. Uh, the wind is picking up a little bit out there. And, of course, you just heard uh, the forecast from WHAV meteorologist Gary Best. Okay. Uh, we got a confirmation that the sound problem is not on our stream. If you want improved sound, uh, you can either go to whav.tv or whav.net and click on the player uh, button. All right, uh, hearing no additional birthdays, and again, Brian has saved a local institution, giving away birthday cakes from our good friends at LBD's second-generation Italian bakery right there in Bradford. Now, these people, I have to say, I'm always impressed. 6 a.m. every day, they're open. 6 a.m., the middle of the night for some of us. Uh, But anyway, we have the hat. We're going to draw the names for the February birthdays or anniversaries. I'm just going to reshuffle. I'm going to pull one out. And the winner is Dr. Frank Oberti uh, of Bradford. This was submitted by Brian. All right, Brian, you, uh, <laughs> you made sure we, we drew the winner, and the winner was your candidate. Uh, birthday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. All right, thanks uh, to Brian. Uh, happy birthday, uh, Dr. Roberti. And uh, thanks go out again to LBD's second-generation Italian bakery in Bradford. Um, I'm going to ask Nate to get this slide. He he did run it a little bit earlier, and those of you listening, I'll describe it. Um, the uh, Haverhill Gazette uh, Weekly just put out its annual traditions section, and you'll see an ad there, for example, for WHAV, founded 1947. It's that that annual piece usually used to run on the uh, January 1st or 2nd, uh, now running this late in the month. But in any event, the tradition section came out, and there was a um, – uh, Nate, are you going to have that slide ready? Um, the, the printed versions of the paper came out just fine, uh, but uh, those of you who might have gone to the um, – 
uh, to the website and downloaded the traditions section, you'll see there's a, a pretty terrible error uh, in the listing for Shoe City Hardware. Uh, the S has been dropped, and so it's it's listed as Ho City Hardware. Now. Um, uh, this is all good natured. Uh, I'm assuming Ed Trinesky will get a refund on his ad for Shoe City Hardware. Uh, but the ad, um, Ho City Hardware. So I sent a, um, it's a joke, folks. It's a joke. I sent a note to my friends at the Eagle Tribune and asked if this was uh, uh, their attempt at truth in advertising. <laughs> all right. All right. Don't yell at me, folks. All right. Uh, but uh, Haverhill's oldest hardware store going back to 1928. The online version of the ad left off the S on shoe. Ho City Hardware. So uh, the lighter side, uh, we're not trying to pick on anybody. Uh, these are the kind of things that uh, you used to see maybe on The Tonight Show when uh, Johnny Carson or maybe some other shows where they would look at these uh, misprints and ads and so on. So um, maybe this is a good segue uh, to Dan Spears, local poet's uh, um, uh, poem for WHAV. He was uh, responding to WHAV's uh, story this weekend about receiving a cultural Haverhill Cultural Council grant uh, to make sure that background is researched and put into news items and even obituaries. And Dan wrote, history describes what transpires, knowledge of history inspires. Uh, thank you very much, Dan, for that. All right, uh, we have a call. Uh, Nate, have you uh, killed that spot? Because of you may as well. We have a community spotlight, folks, but I think uh, tonight with, with the weather happenings and so on, I think uh, you'll forgive us for, for omitting that announcement uh, this hour. You are on the open mic show. Some of us historians don't know that many poems. Most of them start with the one for the girl from Nantucket. Ah, yes. Well, if I keep going in that direction, I'll get kicked off the air for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you're the one who's selling hoes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's the lighter side. That's not how it's spelt in the slang, by the way. What's that? That's not the spelling you're thinking of. Yeah, I know, but uh, it's close enough for a comedic remark. All right, yeah, well, Nate, what are you trying to tell me to do? Nate is like giving me um, instructions here. It's always exciting when you try to translate Nate. Oh, well, Nate, uh, Nate is thinking that maybe he would have to beep us out if um, we said something wrong. I think we're better than that, Nate. But just in case, get your... What's this we stuff you're talking about? You're the one who started reading about there once was a girl from Nantucket. What's your point? <laughs> ah, never mind. David... Open mic show historian. Uh, if you, I didn't read the story, and uh, you may have seen the graphic. Uh, Nate has that graphic too. We had a story out this weekend in our member newsletter, which is available online. Wavelengths um, extra. And it's a story about how uh, some of you have already noticed, but we've been working in uh, background in history into many news stories and the obituaries that we list at whav.net. And one of the um, one of, you know we use uh, several examples in that story, but one uh, when 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 Fred Malcolm passed away a few weeks ago, his official obituary didn't mention some of his great accomplishments, including the fact that he was on the team I think with Barney Gallagher, who brought Haverhill the All America City designation in the 1970s. Uh, nor did the official obituary mention uh, that he. Um, was one of the founders of the Ward Hill Industrial Park, uh, today known mostly as the Ward Hill Business Park. It's actually where our studios are these days. Uh, there was a, an obituary for um, uh, uh, Emily, uh, for Betty Shanahan, and again, uh, the official obits uh, left out that she actually was a city assessor, not just a clerk. Um, she also received a citizenship award from uh, Mayor uh, William H. Ryan, current city councilor, back in 1983. And Gordon Stone, uh, no, that's nothing, David Gordon. <laughs> I'm, 
uh, my my good friend Gordon. I'm sorry, uh, David. Where are, with, where are you going with that one? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's an, another prominent resident who was very much alive, folks. Uh, but David Gordon uh, passed away, and uh, his official obituary again included no references to the fact that he was one of the eight merchants responsible for bringing uh, William Loeb from the Manchester Union Leader to Haverhill to create the. Haverhill Journal. So again, uh, but I want to thank David Godswood publicly because Uh some of this behind the scenes digging up of stuff, and I'm sure there's some people who would rather that it wasn't dug up. uh, Some of the, one of the persons behind the scenes uh, is David Godswood. So thank you, David, for your contributions. Oh, uh, this this is fun for me. And and you're absolutely right. The problem is where, where is all this information? I mean, there was a time as a historian where if you needed a, a, a quick little biographical note on somebody because you wanted to footnote them in an article, you just found their obituary. Not anymore. Now, obituaries have become paid advertising in most newspapers. It's not a criticism. Which, which is why you don't see any in the newspapers anymore. Don't I mean, see... I mean, locally, I think it's $60 for the first 10 lines. All right. So then, you know, there's a cost now to the families. There always were so-called paid death notices. Those usually were on the bottom of obituary pages. No. Uh, but now, um, and, and, you know, again, I, I'm not even, I'm not blaming families. I'm not sure that any family is trying to uh, conceal information, uh, they just may not be aware of it. I mean, some cases, like um, Betty Shanahan, her accomplishments were more than 30 years ago. Yeah, uh, and I, I mean, if you've got a 25-year-old writing obituaries, how are they going to remember something that took place in 1976? So we've been uh, archiving and, and growing uh, our, our databases, and uh, David contributes uh, tremendously to that. If it weren't for David, you might never have known that the first statue to Hannah Dustin in Haverhill was repossessed for non-payment. <laughs> I love that story. I get so much <laughs> mileage out of it. What was that headline you wrote? Because it was so perfect, we kept it. On the, I, uh, the, uh, the case of the mo- mostly missing monument. The case of the mostly missing monument. So, but this is the kind of history. And um, incidentally, by the way, I, I'm assuming anyone who tried to go to possible dreams tonight has found it was an in- impossible dream. Uh, it's been canceled because of the storm. Uh, but in a way. Um, you know, Team Haverhill and, and some of its supporters um, inspired uh, some of this because uh, they brought a lot of new, fresh blood into the city uh, looking to make change. Uh, however, uh, some of those changes included mass demolition on Water Street to put up an amphitheater. And I suspect they were unaware of the history of urban renewal down there. So yeah. I, I, so uh, a lot of good, fresh ideas, nothing wrong with that. We appreciate them. We're glad they're working to improve the city. Uh, but they often call uh, the townies, I guess I would be one of them. Maybe David will, will say he's one. Uh, they often say the townies are just negative uh, old farts. Uh, but, you know, the townies are the ones who, who uh, tried to stop the wrecking ball. I'm gonna, uh, I, you know, earlier in the program, I, uh, I thank Greg Caleri and, and Brian Langlois for their help in, in saving institutions. But another person who's been lost to history is um, attorney Al Belanger. He was one of those so-called townies who tried to stop the wrecking ball, and uh, no one listened. He was the one who predicted the dust bowls that would result and the the movement of families and the losses there. And so um, we need those lessons of history. Uh, Yes, we have townies, and yes, we have newbies. Both bring very good points both benefit from from having history explored. And there, there's got to be a dichotomy that balances out. I mean, yeah, people who have lived in town all their life, they've been through all this. And people who are new, are, they've got the energy. But there's there's got to be some sort of a synergy between the two where, yes, I like this idea, but we did something like this and it didn't work. And let's try a hybrid of it instead. And right. it's, it's, that's, that's where the whole system's falling apart. I mean, 
I, I can spend my whole day making fun of some of the stuff they've done in town that they thought was going to bring crowds of people in to see, such as that uh, god-awful mural. I'm a historian. I'd like to think I've got a little bit of familiarity with Havel. There are people on that mural I've never heard of, which is a good thing. It's a great thing that there are people that even the historians have kind of forgotten that are now immortalized. But the bottom line is somebody from outside of Haverhill is not waking up in the morning and going, gosh, it's a beautiful day for a drive. Let's drive to Haverhill to look at a mural of people we don't know who they are. And then maybe we can stop and look at some giant shoes. No, they just go shopping in New Hampshire or they go down to Salem to see the witches or that sort of thing. Nobody's, none of this stuff is bringing people into town to spend money. It's pretty. It's it's appropriate, it's historically important, but it's not bringing bodies and money into the city where it needs to be. Well, and, and in fact, I suppose, again, I'm going to take some heat for this, uh, some might say that the $100,000 cost of, of painting it, that money all went out of town. That wasn't local painters, that wasn't local artists, uh, that w- all went out of town, and... Um, yeah, I guess I'm a, a townie who has some negative thoughts, but... Um, well, $100,000 would have allowed the library to open up with a full-time archivist. In fact, it's probably an archivist and a half that would have brought special collections back into general usage. That brought in people. It was, at one point, we had the second greatest genealogical collection in Massachusetts, second only to Boston in the New England Historical Genealogical. People would come to town specifically to check our research. And they'd come into town, they'd have to either buy gas for their vehicle, they'd have to stop for lunch, photocopies, they'd stop at the gift shop downstairs at the library. You know, all that, all that nickel and dime revenue doesn't sound like much until you multiply it by how many people were coming. Well, I mean, again... You look I... at a log, any particular month of that special collections, and there were people from... 10, 12, 15 states, three or four countries. Cumulative effect, long term cumulative effect. Well, and this is why people like Al Bolanger are heroes to me, because, you know, there's this idea among, and I'm going to use the, these pejorative uh, terms, but there's an idea among the newbies uh, that the townies destroyed the city. And uh, Al Bolanger was as much a townie as anybody, and he was trying to save it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might, I might go one step further and say the newbies of his day, or you know, my my younger life, the newbies of his day uh, were the people recruited from out of town uh, to staff the housing authority's urban renewal department, and yeah. then took down our city. So um, I I think that uh, again we want to add more news and back more background to news. And uh, Nate is telling me it's the bonus show, but you know what that means? His bonus. Uh, so we're going to have to, we're going to have to, uh, w- I mean, I can't afford this. I can't stay on the air because uh, I can see Nate's already got his, his uh, timer out. Uh, so. I hate when he does that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I feel like Jack Benny at the gas station. You know, uh, every time the, you know, the little ding, 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 and the, at least they used to make that sound as the gas was filling the tank, he'd get more nervous. <laughs> so, well, then you'll have to get off the air before you have to pay for his coffee. That's right. Yes, let's see. Actually, um, Nate has. I'm going to. I'm going to give Nate a little little credit for something, but he um, better not let this go to his head. You know. Well, you do give him little credit. <laughs> Very good, David. But you know, every now and then, when we were absolutely low on coffee, or as it turns out out of coffee, Nate would sneak in here, who knows, in the middle of the night, and replace it. Uh, so this is uh, very nice. Uh, so. It's actually kind of creepy. You know what? <laughs> that's, that's another angle I hadn't thought about. <laughs> Make a note. No drinking the coffee at WHAV when I come to visit. Uh, he, now, Nate just said something. I didn't say it. It's not my... And he can confirm it. He just called himself the Folgers Fairy. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, David. This, this, I, I this, can think of words, uh, but not off the top of my head. Uh, David's um, silent on that end. All right, folks, uh, morning news. Well, there'll be another newscast at 11 o'clock tonight for an update. Weather, of course, every 30 minutes. Uh, stay tuned. And, of course, a full update tomorrow morning, uh, beginning yes. at 7 on WHAV. Well, we've dropped down to 60, and we may actually break, like, into 52, 54 tonight. So we, we feel for you. Yeah, see, uh, David, of course, is in the nice warm climates. And um, if I recall... warm about 54 when you don't have a heating system. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, 54 is a little cool for you guys. But I recall uh, visiting and finding people uh, that when the temperature dropped to 68, were putting on fur pockers down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were making fun of them the first five years, and then your blood switches over. <laughs> okay, so, so much for that. All right, David, thanks for your contributions, as always. Talk to you later, Tim. See you later. Bye. Good night, Nathan. <laughs> All right, so that uh, that's going to wrap up uh, the bonus edition of the Open Mic Show. Again, stay tuned. Uh, this broadcast will also be available online shortly, and uh, so if you want to go back and check a phone number or something, it'll all be at WHAV. Net. Again, thanks to Brian Langwa for reminding us to do a birthday uh, cake drawing. I don't know where this month went, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll take it from there next week when we begin when we begin March birthdays and anniversaries. Have a great night, folks. Open mic! Join Tim Coco live on the open mic again next Monday night at 6.30. The opinions expressed on the open mic show are not necessarily those of WHAV, its underwriters or affiliated stations. The open mic show came to you from the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom. It's 8.37. Would you like to hear the wave on your stereo? Or even better, anywhere in your home? Check out the tips for better sound at www.whav.net. The wave. Hi, I'm meteorologist Gary Best. Do you need to know if it's going to be hot or cold, wet or dry? Well, find out every half hour, seven days a week with Wave Weather. I'll keep you in touch with up-to-the-minute reports covering the greater Merrimack Valley and beyond.